Hello and welcome. Today I want to play a little game with you and I have it on screen already. My game is very simple. You have a spaceship and you need to park it at the center here. You can control this game with the arrow keys so it's very simple. I'm just going to give it a little push here and then start breaking into the middle and a bit of fine tuning and we're there. As you can see we're in space and there's no friction in space so if I put in a little thrust I'll have a velocity here and that velocity is going to stay constant. So if I want to stop somewhere, I have to push into the other direction. And you can see that there's another graph here that shows our position. So this is the thing we want to minimize. We want to stay in the middle and we want to have this graph entirely flat. In fact, we want to have all the graphs entirely flat, right? We want to have the position graph flat, the velocity graph flat, and there's another graph here called uh, T for thrust. So anytime I press a button, I want to see it on the graph. Now, this game is simple enough, right? I'm going to shove my spaceship a bit into the middle, I'm going to break, I'm going to overshoot, I'm going to fine-tune a little bit, and I'm fine. Okay. In fact, this game is so simple that I think a computer should play it. And fortunately for us, for us, that game is set up in a way that it works. And I have a class called Driver here, and this is going to be the driver of our spaceship. Now, all the stuff in here isn't very important, what imp what's important for us is the get inputs uh, function, which we will fill with code now. You can see that this class is reloadable, so I can change the code in here and it'll be applied immediately to this game. The way this works is um, that this class reloadable uh, has a bit of magic. I have a video on this. Um, you can look at this video that shows up right here, right now, if you want to know more about it. Important for us is we can just edit this and it'll be reflected on the right hand side immediately. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? What can we use as an input for our spaceship to park here in the middle? And the first thing I want to try is I want to use the position of the input uh, of the spaceship as an input. Right? We're, we're quite far off right now and I want to push in that direction. And as soon as we get into the center, or as soon as we get into the middle, I want to push less and less. And uh, once we pass the center, I want to break. And that's exactly what this position does. So I'm going to use um, an input called P, um, which stands for proportional. And I'm simply going to give the ship's position in there. Right. And it's called P because this input strength is proportional to the error or to the deviation that we have. Right. This x value is also the error that we want to minimize since we want to stay right at the middle. And uh, this input is going to be proportional to that. Um, and let's try that out. Now I'm going to save this class now. And the inputs are going to be applied immediately. And you'll see. Let's see what happens. All right. That well. At least our ship's moving. It's not moving in the right direction. And the reason for that is that we're to the left of the center and we're also thrusting to the left. So what we have to do is we have to apply a factor of minus one here. And now that looks nice. Let me restart again and see what happens here. Right. At the beginning, our position is very far away from the center. And you can see that the p-value is now positive. So it pushes to the right. The direction is right. And um, you can see that the thrust value is very high. Now, as we approach the center, the p-value is going to go down and the thrust value is going to go down as well. Unfortunately, we're in a situation where there is no friction. So we do overshoot. And since there is zero friction, we overshoot just as far as we were out here. Right? Since we're applying thrust to the right, as long as we are left, we're going to enter this right-hand side with a bit of velocity and to compensate that velocity we have to counteract and since this is entirely symmetrical and there's no friction we're going to oscillate. Now on average this is perfect right on average we are right at the center but this is not we wanted what we wanted to have we wanted to stay at the center we don't didn't want to average on the center but at least the direction is good right we're always moving towards the center. Now the next thing we should do is we should use our velocity as an indicator of where we should go. We should stop pushing before we reach 
uh, the center line and we're going to use the velocity so if we're moving towards the intended position we're going to stop thrusting and if if we indicate that we are moving beyond the position then we're going to reverse our thrust now the velocity is just the derivative of the position so let's calculate the derivative and we're going to do the simplest kind of derivative that we can do here we're going to do south uh, shift dot x and if I could type that would be very nice and we're going to um, compare it to the last position that we were at now the last position um, we need to store it somewhere and we're going to store um, last x is the current position so once we enter that uh, loop again we're going to have the position that we're at in the next loop again but we must also initialize that value so that it works um, for the first time and we're going to initialize to ship.x right so in the first iteration we're staying at ship.x and we're not moving and then every time we're going to see how far we've moved in the last like, time unit and then we'll store the position for the next iteration okay I'm going to save this now and nothing's going to happen because we haven't added it to the outputs yet now I'm going to add this as a separate output what's happening with the inputs is that all of these values here will be added to receive the T input for the ship separating these out into different graphs is uh, into different values is just going to give us graphs here and that makes it easier to, to debug now we have to apply a negative factor here as well because as you can see the derivative is also showing the same direction as the position right when the position is positive we're also moving in that direction so we have to apply a factor of minus one here and uh, we're going to give it the derivative here now I'm going to store to save this and it's going to be applied immediately you will see a graph appear down here and uh, let's see how that works okay looking good looking good looking good uh, didn't change very much right now the problem here is that if you look at these graphs the derivative is much much smaller than the position much much smaller than the proportional value so the derivative actually does something but it doesn't do enough so let's crank it up a bit and increase it tenfold you can see that the graph changed and you can see very subtly that this actually helps right the oscillation only goes until here right now and if we wait for another cycle it's going to go down even further because the derivative is counteracting the proportional input right so this um, this oscillation now decays it's getting smaller and smaller but it's not getting smaller fast enough let's crank it up a bit more and give it a bit more a bit more strength all right this is looking good this is exactly exactly right and this decays wonderfully here and this is perfect but look at what happens before we reach the center line I'm going to reset it and we'll, we're going to have a look All right so it's pushing to the right now at this point the derivative overpowers the proportional input so at this point we already start breaking into the um, into the other direction and um, it's going to decay even faster now so it's going to park quite neatly here let's let's give it one more one more strength update and see how far how well that goes ah, this is wonderful isn't it oh this works nicely it does a bit of overshoot and then it parks into the center this is great all right this is wonderful now we've kind of solved it right it's not very fast let's try that again and uh, if you look at the at the strength of the of the thrust it's much slower than what we did right we we pushed very hard and we parked um, a lot slower here oh, I messed up my code so let's apply a factor here a common factor and let's give it a factor of minus 10 um, I'm going to add the minus here so I can get rid of the negative numbers here and um, 
uh, this fact just means that we're going to multiply all of these values by uh, by 10 and um, that means we're going to be much stronger so let's try this out all right much faster reaction and almost perfect parking isn't this nice and smooth wonderful okay this is perfect right it did the exact same thing that we did as well it pushes strongly and then it breaks in slowly and you can see in the graphs that it works almost exactly as we wanted it to have right these two balance out until they are in the middle now if you're mathematically inclined you would say okay instead of doing these silly values let's do a prediction like let's do a prediction of where I'm gonna land in a few time units and that is exactly what's happening here right the the prediction if you do a linear prediction what you're doing is you're taking your current position and add some factor uh, of a derivative so you're, you're looking into the direction of the derivative and add some factor to it and then you compute well this is going to be where I'm going to be probably in some number of time units and this is exactly what we're doing so instead of using a position of the ship as our input value or as our as our control value now we're using a prediction of where we're going to be in a few time units and as you can see that works much better right the overshoot is almost entirely compensated now this is very nice and I think we finished the game unfortunately this game is set in a solar system and there's a Sun and from time to time the Sun will start producing solar wind and what the solar wind does is it's going to push our spaceship away from the center it's going to push our spaceship away um, with a constant force and as you can see this is exactly what happens right the spaceship is being pushed away but it compensates unfortunately we are now in a static situation right the position has deviated a little bit from the center the derivative counteracts it and these two are in perfect balance unfortunately they're not in balance at the right position they're not in balance at the center they're a bit off center and um, this will happen every time because now there is a constant force being applied to our spaceship and this constant force will push our spaceship away until it balances all the forces out so what we need is another force that counteracts this constant this constant error right and in fact what we want to do is we want to apply some some error or some uh, input depending on how far we deviate and this input is going to be called um, the integral it's going to be an integral input because we're going to integrate the error of our spaceship we're going to integrate the position of our spaceship and we're going to um, use that as an input for a correction against this constant error all right so we're going to compute the integral and we're going to be a very s it's going to be a very simple integral it's going to be uh, integral plus the ship's current position okay so in every time step we're just going to add our ship's position to the integral now uh, to make this work across time steps we're going to have to turn this into a um, class variable and um, we're going to do oops, this all right okay so the computation works but it's not doing anything because we haven't added it as an input and I'm going to call this the I input um, it's going to be as another graph and um, let's give it a try let's see what happens all right looking good looking good and not looking very good anymore the ship's gone and you can see why this integral is way too strong it's much stronger than the other oh there it is it's much stronger than the other factors so let's let's give it a bit of a damper and uh, say 0 0.01 time this is the integral whoops typing is a hard thing tell you that let's see what happens if we decrease the strength of the integral all right that looks kind of good you must remember that the integral 
kind of points into the same direction as the position at the start but at the end it's going to point in a different direction so you can see that the integral is negative so it's going to go this way and it's also decreasing because we are now at the right hand side this integral is decreasing and this is exactly the behavior we wanted to have we wanted to compensate for some error and diminish until the error reaches zero and that's exactly what's going to happen here unfortunately this is not very not very quick now um, what's happening here is we now have built a PID controller this this thing that we've built is called a PID controller and it is what's keeping things at uh, <laughs> it's 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 what controlling things in uncertain terms if you do not have direct control over a variable instead you have just some input that changes the variable um, it's very common to have a PID controller. In fact um, this is the kind of mechanism that keeps ships or cars at a constant speed and you can imagine that this is a car right the um, the solar wind that we have activated here is friction and if you're going uphill it's going to change and you want to stay at the set speed all the time right so this is the mechanism that that does that now what we're doing here with these numbers and with these factors is we're tuning our algorithm we're tuning our controller and uh, you already saw that this isn't perfect right if I restart it again it's going to overshoot a little bit and it's going to um, going to slowly converge and we should probably do something about that right but this the central principle is that you have these three inputs the proportional input which is proportional to the error the derivative input which is um, the change in error and the integral input which accumulates the error over a certain time and these have these three the three functions that we saw here now the integral input is usually uh, the one that must be most heavily most heavily discarded right the integral is something that we want to apply around a a small area in the middle so let's actually in a uh, clamp the integral to values between let's say minus 10 and 10 and um, that means that our integral is now confined to a central area and that means that it can't do very much now since we've lowered the strength of the integral in total we'll have to apply a bit more force to it and um, I think this is going to look good all right that looks almost perfect right so our integral is now much much less strong and I think this is almost perfect okay all right what we've built is a PID controller proportional integral derivative controller not in every situation all of these factors are necessary and you'll have to tune the factors for your specific situation there's a lot of theory going on and a lot of practice going on with the tuning of these parameters in which situation you should have these parameters and how strong they should be but um, that's much further than we can go here if you start off with a PID controller you're on a good way and then you can you can tune the variables there's a lot more documentation there's a lot more mathematics and I've put some links into the description and into the repository and if you want to try it out yourself just clone the repository and follow the instructions in the readme it's a great way to learn about these things and it's great to uh, play with the code so I urge you to try it out thank you for listening and see you next time